After coming up two wins short of winning their franchise's 18th title, the reigning Eastern Conference champions entered the offseason with a need for scoring off the bench. Trading for a player who's averaged over 21 points per game in Malcolm Brogdon, signing a 40% three-point marksman in the underrated stretch big Danilo Gallinari, and drafting a 19-year-old diamond in the rough J.D. Davison could fulfill Boston's needs for the 2023 campaign. Here's how those moves impact their chances at making another run to the finals. Right quick, just to plug my Insta, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Hoops, where I post daily NBA highlights and updates that I promise you can't miss. Again, the handle's at Hoops, so go follow me up. I'd greatly appreciate it. Now into the content. It's unbelievable that GM Brad Stevens received a member of the 50-40-90 club and the former Rookie of the Year with the Milwaukee Bucks, Malcolm Brogdon, in exchange for merely Daniel Tice, Aaron Nesmith, Malik Fitz, Juwan Morgan, Nick Stauskas, and a 2023 first-round draft pick. Nesmith was an intriguing prospect, but with Boston in win-now mode, they couldn't afford to wait for his development. Aaron will have all the time in the world to get better in Indianapolis with the Pacers. But the main reason making this deal a robbery for Boston is that if there was one thing the Celtics were lacking in 2022's playoffs where they got two wins short of achieving the ultimate glory, it was stable playmaking to set the table for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Tatum and Brown ranked number one and number two in total turnovers in 2022's playoffs. A big reason for that was they weren't able to get enough clean looks in the post or in their hot spots, as instead of receiving a clean pass to those areas, they were forced to create unnatural opportunities off the dribble. It's normal, normal. for a team's best player to rank near the top of the turnover rankings in the postseason, but Tatum was 26 ahead of any other player, and Jason also set the NBA record for total turnovers throughout the playoffs, so JT is going to have to clean that up. With that said, it was an outstanding playoff run for Jason, who in 24 games averaged over 25 points, 6 assists, and 6 rebounds on a shooting split of 43-39-80. Tatum attempted 8.3 triples per night and knocked down an elite 39% of them, which is noteworthy. If you're rightfully concerned about Jason's turnover numbers, the addition of Malcolm Brogdon is going to give Tatum and of course the most talented second option in basketball, Jalen Brown, the most unselfishly talented point guard they've ever played next to. With all due respect to Marcus Smart, who's the team's heart and soul, and a solid facilitator in his own right, the C's needed a better floor general who could manage the pace better and play low turnover basketball at the point guard spot. Brogdon can blow past defenders off the dribble with his first step and get to the basket with solid finishing, and if his matchup backs off just an inch, he can let jump shots fly from distance. But whether Malcolm gets his own with individual bucket getting or not, his ability to hang on to it and keep the dribble alive downhill, and even dribble through the paint and then kick it out sometimes, even when he has an open layup potentially, somewhat resembles how Steve Nash ran the point guard and got his guys involved. So given Brogdon's coming off the bench, he's a damn scary sixth man. Going back to Marcus Smart, and the DPOY has already expressed admiration for the Brogdon acquisition as he told The Athletic, quote, I love it. You've got two veteran guys who can feed off each other, who can rotate and help this team in multiple ways. I think it's going to fit perfect. Not one of us will have all the pressure running the team. Malcolm Brogdon is one of 10 players in NBA history next to Larry Bird, Mark Price, Reggie Miller, Steve Nash, Dirk Nowitzki, Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, and Kyrie Irving to shoot 50% from the field, 40% from three-point range, and 90% from the free-throw line in a single season. They call it the 50-40-90 club for that reason, and Malcolm being in it just goes to show you how consistent of a player he really is. Malcolm had some praise for Smart when he was introduced as a Celtic, as Brogdon said, quote, I think bringing me here helps him, I'm going to embrace him, he's going to embrace me, end quote. The only concern for Malcolm is the prolonged injury history he dealt with last season, as the man was under concussion protocol at one point, and he also suffered injuries to his right Achilles, setbacks which limited him to 36 games total in 2021-22. Here was the seeming to be GM legend in the making, Brad Stevens, on the team's mantra after the Brogdon acquisition. 
everybody everybody knows you know what the goal is and everybody knows that in order to achieve that we have to become deep flexible be able to play a lot of different ways and every single guy that I talk to and I talk to you know all of those guys and Marcus included within you know an hour of the trade they're all jacked they're all excited they're they're ready to roll I know Malcolm you and Marcus go back this is about winning, and I think you know one of the things about Marcus's tenure as a Celtic, it's been defined by winning in the playoffs every year. And to stay the same, as Malcolm said, everybody else in the league is trying to get better. And everybody else in the league, as you're making your run, is reading about you making your run. So you've got to you've got to meet the challenge by improving, and we've got to do that individually with our own work and our own development. Um, and we had to do that by addressing the roster needs. And, you know, we're really excited because, like, you've heard these guys, as I said earlier, these two really get it, and they really know what it's about, and, um, and the guys that we have in that locker room that are back know that, too. Then there's another former 20-point-per-game scorer who the Celtics added on this offseason, this time in the free agent market, robbing one of our game's premier stretch bigs in the 33-year-old Danilo Gallinari for just $13 million over two years. Obviously, this man would have gotten paid a much bigger bag on another team, but he took a massive pay cut to play with the reigning Eastern Conference champions after getting over $20 million alone this past season. Gallinari adds a much-needed veteran presence, just like Brogdon does, quite honestly, and overall, Gallo and Malcolm combined to give the Celtics an extra 30.8 points, 9.8 rebounds, and 7.4 assists per game. Speaking of off-season steals, how about the 53rd overall pick from this year's draft, a man who I called a robbery in this video right here, in J.D. Davison, who dropped a dominant 28 points to go along with 10 assists in Boston's most recent summer league game, fueling the Celtics to a blowout win. Of course, he'll be on a two-way deal up and down from the G League, but personally, I think Davison's ready to be getting reps as a bench piece for the Celtics right off the bat, as he showed off in Wednesday's Summer League game, JD's ball handling, slashing, and playmaking can make a legitimate impact off the pine. The Alabama product can take it coast-to-coast -coast in transition with his speed. He's got the ability to hang in the air past rim protectors for contested layups. Davison's jump shot is fundamentally sound, and he can even play some defense. But remember, given Boston's win-now mentality... It's sad to think that JD won't get much of a chance to develop his game with a big team. Expect Davison to be in the G League, but regardless, he's a great prospect for Boston to have in their system. If JD continues to prove himself as a draft steal, Boston could be adding a Terry Rozier-esque talent. These new bench pieces should give a ton of extra juice to the new look 2023 Celtics, but how much do Brogdon, Gallo, and Davison add to the C's in your opinion? top answer in the comments section earns next video shout out today's shout out goes to swoo who says even though golden state lost some of their depth this offseason i don't think it's anything to panic about as long as their young players keep developing the way they are i think their focus should be on securing the future of jay pool and wigs on the best possible team friendly deals available without lowballing those two specific players because they're the future of the warriors while also being the type of players who are able to win now appreciate every answer Leave your take on today's question to Compete in Community Speaks. Flow signing off.